My name is Kenyatta Jackson, and I will be your moderator for this evening's session. I want to remind the class to please silence all cell phones and any other electrical devices, devices at this time. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago North Side Group class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof to you the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. Mm -hmm. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Pepper Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The North Side Chicago Zoom class was established in the year 2007. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you the school officials. The Dean of the North Side Chicago Zoom class is Dr. John Quaid, and the President is Dr. Patrick Mitchell. In this school, we use the true, correct, original names and titles of the Father, the Word or Son, and of the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been properly substituted by the word Lord. The true title of the word of Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by the word God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and his name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords many and gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove to you that neither the Hebrew language, nor the Greek language, nor the Latin language has any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in our English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus, and Jehovah, impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like the Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And then this day, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source and substance, limits and bounds of everything. Now we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. And we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That means having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood by divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the practice of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe, 
It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and the court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitution of Angel and the of Chicago North Side Schools are as follows. First, it's to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and that he actually exists. And second, it's to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. And third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law of the so-called law of nature and the power latent man. And fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. And fifth is to extirpate current superstition skepticism, and ignorance. And six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. And seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of the time. And ninth is to and eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today we'll be dedicating the prayer by Dr. Mariah Coleman and we will also have our scripture lesson, lesson which is 1 Corinthians is the 13th chapter read by Dr. Ramirez Coleman. May we please have our prayer. Good evening. Good evening. Let us all bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. And we just want to thank Yahweh for your son, Yahshua and Messiah, that we have another opportunity to continue to learn more about him and his pattern and plan of salvation. And we also want to ask him to keep us focused tonight on what he has to present to us so that we can learn more about him. With that, I'm so happy. Good evening, class. Good evening. <laughs> I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trader, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. 
reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profit me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up does not behave itself unbecomingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy, prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also I am. Now and now abideth faith, Hope, oh, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. That was First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Our first speaker for this afternoon is Dr. Nicole. <laughs> I mean, <Amen. laughs> Good evening, class. Good evening. <laughs> All right. Um, go back to my script for this. It's a pleasure and honor to be able to come to class once more. It was a little hectic getting here. Sometimes it's like that. Um, but we're here. So let's be still. Our first lesson in universal knowledge. We know that he is Yahweh. That's right. So, these past few weeks or months, Yahweh has been working with the body with love and loving the brother and being long suffering with one another. We are down here at the end of the fourth age, the present kingdom, and at the end of the sixth dispensation. Uh, we are coming to the last few critical sections of the probationary period. And
Who do you need? Yasha. There's a song uh, I think in Springfield. If you ever needed Yahweh, you sure don't need him now, right now. And if people haven't come to the full conscious realization that how important it is to have him in us, then that's something to examine within our own selves. Um, I'm gonna try to stick with the scripture lesson, which was concerning love. So being that it is, we're down here at the end of this age of probationary period. We need to love one another. The last remarks that our founder gave before leaving the flesh, departing out of the body was to love one another. He said, get your house in order and to love one another. We're gonna need each other down here at this end, where we are now. There's just so much distraction, so much chaos out in the world. And Yahweh has brought this to our attention concerning the assembly, where people are pointing the finger saying how so-and-so, so-and-so ain't who they ought to be. Go and tell so-and-so, did you get the latest news? And the things which we learn fall in the way and a root of bitterness springing up in us. So Yahshua, what I'm seeing through all the classes and these events, like in Hamilton, Canada, keeping the unity of the spirit, this is something I have to remind myself. The purpose of Yahweh, this is in the textbook, from start to finish is one big crucifixion of heartache, but it ends in a happy and glorious state. This is true, a love story. Yahweh created this creation, manifested in a physical body to make himself known. You see, out of love, everything. Um, let's see. Let's go back in that scripture lesson. Um, go ahead and start with the first verse. So I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love. I have become as sounding brass or a peak in the summer. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mystery and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Is it being picked up? I just want to make sure it's okay. Okay. And though I be, can you be, I'm sorry, can you please start that over again? Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Okay, love suffereth long. Now love suffereth long. Now Paul is saying, I think that you can get up here and you can preach the gospel. You can get up here, run the correlations, go through principles, but this is side note. One thing that I looked at going through and reading the life and history of Dr. Henry C. Kinley, and they brought up the conventions, and each of those national regional conventions, they said that the gospel was preached with power and demonstration. 
So it's one thing to come up on the floor and to preach. And then there's another thing to actually manifest or act for what you preach. Um, I want to go ahead and get some witnesses, but I want you to continue on. Uh, read the fourth verse again. Love suffers long. Now, love suffers long. Go ahead. And is kind. And is kind. Love envieth not. It envieth not. Love vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unbecomingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So Yahweh within himself is both masculine and feminine. Now he said, Love seeketh not her own. Now, what we're talking about is divine love. We're not talking about an emotional feeling that you have and that you want to give a kiss or hug one another. We're talking about the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of righteousness, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Now, Yahshua, you see, suffers long and is kind, you see, envieth not. Um, on the 40 play chart, when you see the days of creation, we say that this school, all the time, that this pattern here, Yahweh showed Moses this pattern in the land, in the wilderness of Sinai, on the second trip, Yahshua, or uh, who the world calls Joshua, the son of Nun, transformed into this uh, incorporeal, heavenly anthropomorphic body or shape and form here, and then transfigured into this intangible threefold tabernacle, and then back into himself. And if you can zoom in and you see on this portion, the top portion, which would be correlative to the most holy place of the tabernacle, it's a threefold structure, but yet it's threefold, but yet one structure. The most holy place, a holy place, the fourth round of the body. Now, the creation came in by the pattern. Elohim is the archetype, original pattern of the universe. Pattern also, when you look up, look it up in uh, the dictionary, also means father. He is the father, take on shape and form. And through him, created the physical creation. Or as our founder said, when Yahweh took on shape and form, he left the creating business to his son. And really, Yahweh Elohim is Yahshua. They are one, you see. And in the top portion of this, of this chart, this is the vision of the days of creation shown to Moses. You see a heart here. Another heart. First thing. Second thing. Third thing. Fourth thing. Fifth thing. Sixth thing. You see. And then he rests on the Sabbath. That heart is representing spirit law, brother. And Yahweh created this creation in love. You see here on the sixth day how that heart here is also in the fourth roundabout. You see, Yahweh breathed into the man the nostril, in his nostrils, the breath of life. You see, and he became a living soul. And Yahweh's desire was to make himself known unto his creatures so that he can gather all those in heaven and all those in earth unto himself. It's a round trip, as we say. Now, this is the chart on the pattern, the plan of salvation. Salvation means deliverance. We're talking about love. In each of these plates that you see here, that's going according to this threefold passion, a fashion, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. In each of these plates, there's a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And Yahshua said, I am the resurrection. So, I want to go and get some witnesses of the love that Yahweh had. And Yahweh willing, I can um, 
stay on course with this train of thought here. So I want you to go ahead and continue where you left off. The sixth verse. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Mm -hmm. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never faileth, though whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Mm -hmm. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Mm -hmm. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Now, let's go ahead and um, we'll, we'll pick up with Adam. So we'll pick up this transgression. So now here you have Yahweh making man, made man on the sixth day. Now Yahweh, um, if you pick it up in the second chapter of Genesis, where Yahweh, um, or Adam couldn't find a suitable help. And Yahweh formed the woman out of the man. You can find that for me. Genesis 2, Because these events pose principles, and these principles shows us through the Holy Spirit, the reality of what's really going on here. You have the man Adam first being created, and then the woman Eve coming out of the man. Um, go ahead and pick up in Genesis. Okay, this is Genesis 2 and 20. Mm -hmm. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was none found a help me for him. And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took out of took out of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stayed thereof. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Right. And Adam said, "This is now bone of my bone." Now he said, "This is bone of my bone." Go ahead. And flesh of my flesh. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Woman, for she, for she was taken out of the man. Now, what that is showing us here is get for me where it says the um the first man Adam and the second man Adam. Because what it's really showing you here is Yahshua the Messiah. Now, this woman Eve, you could run it by the creation. You could run it by you and I. The woman or the creation came out. You see Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh in this pure spirit state. Then you see Yahweh, take, Yahweh taking on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. Transform into this uh, intangible threefold uh, tabernacle pattern and then back into himself. And then you see what coming out isn't that a line drawn in the middle? And the creation is coming out of his side. You see, just like the woman Eve was uh, created out of the side of Adam's rib and womb. And then Yahweh manifested his love in the creation, just as Adam manifested 
what we call philoprogenitiveness, which means extinct, instinctive love for their offspring. They were bone and bone, flesh and flesh. They were one. Y'all, Adam loved Eve just as Yahweh loved him. Yahshua loved the creation. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, um, hold that for me. But go ahead and get that verse about the first man. All right, this is this is uh first uh Corinthians 15, I'll start at 45. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, mm -hmm. and the last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. Now, now the first man Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam, which is Yahshua the Messiah, you see. We moved on past the cross. He done resurrected now. He's poured out into the hearts and minds of the believing, you see, sons. Now he's a life-giving spirit. You see, now he is he's abiding in us. He's the one. Listen, it's his love in us that calls us to be kind and to envy not. And to and really what that love is, which I'm going to later explain. Only me. go back to this. Uh, go back to go back here, and I want you to get from me where the serpent came unto the woman and deceived her. Genesis uh, three and start at the first verse. We talk about a man and, and a woman, or a husband and wife. Yahshua the creation. Yahshua the bride. You see. This is Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Elohim had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So when that commandment was given, Eve was in Adam. Now, as long as Eve, the woman, was in the man, she was safe. She was okay. It was once the woman was out of the man, here comes the serpent persuading her, or as it talks about, um, is it in Hebrews? Appearing as an angel of light, you know, mm -hmm. words smooth as butter, you see, but he had war in his heart. Mm -hmm. So now here he's coming unto the one, and he's in, in the way he uses his influence is a is in a form of a question. Now, did Yahweh say that you shall not eat of every tree that knowledge is good and evil that's in the midst of the garden? Go ahead, read on. This is the fourth verse. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now ye shall not surely die. Now the commandment of what Yahweh told the man was not to touch or eat it. And in the day he was to eat it, he was to what? Surely die. So now here is Satan saying, Oh, no death will you die. You see, lying, being that, being that beast or rebellious spirit. All right. So he's saying, No death will you die. Go ahead. For Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as Elohim's, knowing good and evil. See, the woman was subject to bed, not willing to grab that scripture. Because it was according to the purpose. This pattern, everything that the moderator says goes according to this pattern. It starts with the head or the most holy place. And then it comes down, just like that sperm, you see, when that, um, where it's, when that sperm or that secretions go into the, you see, the womb of the woman, and it starts taking on shaking form. The head is formed first, and then the body follows, it remains. Yahweh coming out of his pure spirit state, taking on a shaping form, manifesting in a physical body, in as the physical creation. So here, man is, here the man is in the elevated state here. You see, like unto that most holy place, they're one with Yahweh alone. 
you see, but there has to be a coming down. It has to be a, 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 a coming down so that Yahshua can come and what? Resurrect the man on back up. So now here, we're having the woman being subject unto vanity, not willingly. She was, as uh, she stated, beguiled or influenced by the satanic spirit or by this um, Lucasarian spirit. Go ahead and get that scripture for me. This is Romans 8 and 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Now she was the creature looking unto the creature. And that's Satan's job. He wants you, no matter if it's the desire that you may have, as long as you're not looking unto Yahshua the Messiah, he has all the type of distractions he can throw at you, more than we can think or, or number, you see. As long as you're not keeping your eye on him, as Eve should have had his eye on, on Adam, but she has what? She's looking at this uh, uh, this angel here, and then you see Adam watching. You see, he, he's looking at her, and she's looking at him. You see? Go ahead. Not willingly. Not but willingly. But by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Now, by reason of him who have su subjected the same in hope. Now, we just read that. Um, where it said, um, now by the faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is what? Love. You see, Yahweh loved us. He gave us hope, or he gave us a way out, and that's that's through, that's through him, but I, I'm, I'm moving ahead, but go ahead and go back into Genesis. And so and this is Genesis this. 3 and 5. Yes. For Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Now she, now he, that Satan, that deceptive spirit, giving half truths. Their eyes were to be open, but what he did not inform her is what it was going to be open to. If they were already, you see, as Yahweh Elohim or like Yahweh Elohim, they were in made in uh, his likeness and after his image. They were already conscious of him. You see, their eyes were open to the spirit. But now what he is saying that your eyes shall be open. But what you don't know is that they're going to be open to the flesh. You see, go ahead and read on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now you see how Satan works. He makes things seem good. Go ahead. And that, and that, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. That it was Pleasant to the eyes, you see something to be desirous or something that looks good. Go ahead. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And to be desired, you see, that's like that that lust or that you see, she's not she's lusting now or looking at it in a different way now. That venom is uh, is taking on, you see, within her heart and mind. And a tree desired to make one wise, you see. Then Yahweh say in Proverbs, be not wise in thy own eyes. You see, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Well, here in this case, she doesn't do that. Because what does she do? Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof. Now, she took of the fruit. Now, we're talking about love. Because the woman took the fruit. She was the one who took part. You see, she was the one who was deceived. Adam wasn't. And we're going to prove that. Because watch what's going to happen. Go ahead. Um, and she took up the fruit thereof and did eat. Now, and she took it and she ate. All right, go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, she gave it unto her husband. Now, Adam knew. He knew well. He knew better than not to eat of that fruit. You see, Satan didn't go unto the man. He went unto the woman to get to the man. Because the woman was his weakness. Satan always goes after our weaknesses, folks. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what we, you know, how it's food, you know, sugar is some people's weakness. You know, they just got to have it. It tastes so good. They crave it. They desire it. You see, they make it feel good. You see? So here is he. She, he is going through the woman to get to the man because this one looks like this one that kicked him out of heaven. See what I'm saying? So now, what Adam does is he willingly takes, not willfully, but he willingly takes. Why? Because he had that love. They were bone of bone, flesh of flesh. They were one. He loved his wife. He loved Eve. So knowing the penalty that he was to die, 
he willingly, you see, died for his bride. And what did he do? He took of that fruit and he ate it. Go ahead. You talk about commitment. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were open. Now look, I just mentioned commitment. Once Yahweh took on this shape, on this shape and form, he was committed to the purpose. He was committed to die. It was already, Yahweh had already formulated in his mind from the beginning to the ending of what he was going to do. Take on shape and form, manifest in the physical body. You see, take away sin, put it upon himself. He's taking somebody else's fault, you see, and putting it on him. Dying the death of an outcast dog. So once he took on this shape and form, there's no changing. Yahweh changes not. So he was committed taking on to this shape and form, which was a death. And it had to be manifested in the physical earth plane and him dying so we can appreciate what he did back here. This was a great and high and lofty state, Yahweh in his pure spirit state. You see, all in all, he took, he, he had to, in part, not in totality, take on shape and form or um, what's the word? Condense himself or restore it. Have these attributes to come into a set order. You see here, these attributes into a set order, according to the pattern, which is himself, you see, in a lower degree, because though this was the super incorporeal form here, this one is not compared, you see, to Yahweh, his pure spirit state. You see, this amount of glory. So he taking on a shape and form, not losing none, you see, but coming out of that state, which is like an unto a death. For it, because, um, where does it talk about? Uh, he is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, you see. He willingly came down, what? To make himself known unto his cre created creation and make himself known unto his creatures. So here you have Adam being committed, willingly, willingly dying for his bride, you see. Go ahead. And they knew that they were naked. Now look, they knew that they were naked. So now their eyes, that they're no longer conscious. You see, then they don't have that spiritual oneness, that bone of bone, flesh and flesh. The bone represents the soul. They were one with Yahweh alone. Now, after that, that connection was subtle. Now it's combination. Now the man, now they're carnal. You see, and now they know they're naked, and now they're afraid. That's just showing you that. That uh, this nature here is the prey, dark, condemned nature. See, they're no longer in the light, spiritually or uh, psychologically. They're no longer spiritually alive. They instantaneously die as soon as they touch and eat of that fruit. You see, so now they're open. Their eyes are open. They're naked and afraid. Go ahead. And they saw big leaves together and made themselves apron. Mm -hmm. So look, now they're trying to cover. You see. They're trying to cover up, but you can't cover up before Yahweh. Yahweh looks at the soul. You see what I'm saying? So now they, they hide themselves. Go ahead. Uh, get to the part where, um, well, no, just keep reading on. Keep reading on. And the voice of Yahweh Elohim, and they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, now look, no longer coming from within. Now they're hearing it. They, you see, now, now the woman... Is outside of the sun. You see what I'm saying? She's they, they're no longer in oneness with Yahweh alone or in Yahshua. So now, rather than hearing up here or being one, now they're hidden themselves, they're covered, they're, they're naked, they're afraid, and now they're hearing them speaking. All right, go ahead. And they heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now Yahweh and, waited until the cool of the day where the sun was going down because that S-U-N that was placed in the sky was a type and shadow of the S-O-N. So when the man is coming down, you have it, the sun being manifested. You see coming down with the man. Go ahead. In time beginning. Go ahead. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. Now look, they're trying to hide themselves amongst the presence. You see, everything is Yahweh. You can't hide from Yahweh. Go ahead. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Look, where art thou? Adam supposed. Where are you? 
Now, if they were, if this being manifested bone to bone, flesh to flesh, they're one. Now it's showing you that Adam is no longer one with Yahweh Elohim. Where are you? You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid. And now look, he speaks and he doesn't come back fully. So Adam had no choice when Yahweh said, where are you? But to come and to present himself. No one can't resist the will of Yahweh, you see. And Adam there is confessing. Go ahead. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Right. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? So if that was revealed unto him that it was naked, Yahweh know that he he already knew before he touched the fruit that he was going to touch the fruit. You see what I'm saying? So it just revealed what was in him because now he knows he was naked. Now, if he was spiritually minded, he would have known he was naked. But now because the man is dead, he's aware of his state. See, in addition, go ahead. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. So now here comes the blame game. You see how the... That nature, when the man died, he changed quick. Because now, look, he's going to point to the woman. It's the woman who gave me, you see. The woman says, it's the serpent. He beguiled me. So go ahead and get to that point where Yahweh goes unto the, um, he goes, uh, get to the point where he tells the serpent, you know, on your belly, shall, shall thou go. He, he look. He cursed the serpent. See what I'm saying? The serpent was cursed. Adam and Eve were not cursed. You see, now they had they were condemned, but they, they were punished, but they were not cursed. The serpent here was the one that was cursed. So go ahead and pick that up. This is 14. Yeah. And Yahweh said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle right. and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go. And dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. You see, oh, go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. No. And it shall bruise thy head, right. and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the enmity. These are the two seeds right here. This is the seed, Yahshua the Messiah, the seed, and that the other seed or seed. These are the two seeds. Now he said that serpent shall bruise the seed's heel. And that seed shall bruise the serpent's head. That was manifested here when Yahshua the Messiah died. Don't you see when he, Yahweh Elohim, manifested in our physical body? This is the lowest part. You see, this is the lowest as you can go. The physical creation is the lowest and weakest state, you see. But here, Yahshua taking on a, a physical body or a specially prepared body, and they bruised his body. You see, they tortured this body. They crucified, spat, and mocked his body. That's like bruising his heel. That's the lowest part of your body. You see, he manifested from this high and lofty state all the way down into this physical body. So that's that serpent bruising his heel. But what happened three days later? Yahshua resurrected, overcame death. You see, having life and death. You see, the keys of life and death. You see what I'm saying? He overcoming that uh, uh, death or hell in the grave, like an unto that seed, bruising the serpent's head. You see what I'm saying? Um, Manifesting on that day of Pentecost. Go ahead <clears throat> and continue where you left off here in Genesis. Okay, I was at 16. Yeah. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Now look, cursed is the he didn't curse the man. He said, Cursed is the ground for your sake. Yahweh's still showing love, folks. He listen, he gave them. Uh, a sheep, he gave them a, a sheepskin, you see, to clothe himself. What is that representing? You got that sheep that's above Adam right here, right? That's representing Yahshua the Messiah. Now they're covered in that sheep skin. Yahweh is foreshadowing or foretelling all that's going to occur. So now he gave, he clothed them. You see what I'm saying? And then he didn't leave them without a hope. It was the hope through the promised seed that was going to redeem or avenge Adam. You see that blood. 
that was uh, uh, taken on the woman and the man. Not physically, but uh, spiritually. It was manifested through his son, uh, Cain, who killed his brother Abel, and his blood what, spilled on the earth. And Yahweh said, you know, your brother's blood cries unto me. So now here Yahweh making a way of escape, or he's making, you see, setting up salvation, having all of mankind to fall because they were through his loins, you see, everybody's coming down all at once. Yahweh is fair, but he left them without, he did not leave them without hope. You know, that hope was through him, Yahshua the Messiah. We have two mysteries in operation, just like I was manifest with Cain. That's that mystery of iniquity or death. Then we have with Abel, that's like that mystery of righteousness. So you have two genealogies or mysteries coming down through the dispensations and ages and time, which is the second, third, and fourth, Yahweh purpose. So now this is the second age, anti-Bluvian age, beginning after the transgression. This was the age of consciousness, where man was governed by their conscience, which they all, which they disobeyed and uh, um, neglected continually to the point where it was evil. I want you to get to that point, Genesis 6, where it was evil continually. All right. So Yahweh, go ahead and read. Okay, this is um, Genesis 6 and 5. Mm -hmm. And Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm -hmm. Continue? Continue, yes. And it, reprint, it repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created, from the face of the earth, right. both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Now get to go get, go ahead and get to Noah. But found, Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. Right. Go ahead. And look, it was nothing special about Noah. Noah, what does he, his name mean? Comfort. Now he was comfort down here at the end of this age. What you think is going to happen down here with all the crap that we got to go through on a continued day-to-day -day basis? We need some comfort. You see what I'm saying? Love is comfort. Love has it out fear. You see what I'm saying? So now you have peak comfort down here being manifest with this uh, man, Noah. Noah is another manifestation of Yahshua the Messiah. Not nothing great about the man, but it's the principle. He had the Holy Spirit in them dwelling at that time. That's why he found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? So now he goes unto the man, Noah, all right? He prepares him, or he tells him, well, go ahead and continue. Ninth verse. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Noah. Go ahead and you can skip that part. Uh, go to the point where he said um, to build him an ark. Okay. Um, I'll jump to uh, 11. Okay. And the earth was corrupt before all of them. Now, the, and earth, the earth plane was corrupt. Dr. Kennedy said in the transcript, I forgot which one it was, but he stated, he said, um, he said, the state. Can't word it verbatim. So I have to paraphrase. I apologize. But what he said was that the state of condition of which they were in at that time was the same state of condition back here during the days of Noah. Now we're in the so called year 2020, folks. It's 2023. I'm sorry. It's worse than what it was um, before. And it, like, where is that? You know what? Pick it up for me. Exodus 24. Hold that for me. 24 um, and... Where he says, um, the days of Noah, so shall be in the coming of Oh, Matthew 24. Sorry, Matthew. Same thing Matthew. as being repeated. Go ahead. I'm sorry. This is Matthew 24 and 37. Uh, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, 
They were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, you have that manifested now. A lot of folks are getting married. A lot of folks are getting divorced. Now, what that's really talking about is marrying, you see, marrying and then giving into marriage. Marrying the Yash, going to Yashua, then going off and viewing and looking at the creature or going to some other church. Or so. It's departing from the faith. You see, departing from your husband, your true husband, you see what I'm saying, marrying and giving in marriage. Now, look, that same state of condition back here is being repeated now, worse now than ever. All right. And we don't want to forget that the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection. Listen, Adam died in his conscience, buried in condemnation, but they have the hope of that promised seed that was going to resurrect them. All right. And that seed was Yahshua the Messiah. Which he did do, and he did fulfill and bring the past. Now we come in here, all mankind is dead. They, they're, they're, they're already dead. They're buried in wickedness, and that wickedness is great. And Yahweh is going to make a way of escape through this ark. Now Yahweh tells the man to build an ark. He gives him a vision. You see, Yahweh always speaks. He gives him a vision. You see what I'm saying? And um, because think about it here. They was this wasn't a physical creature that they were looking at right here. This was a vision. He was looking at a uh, um, uh, uh, not a physical serpent, but she was else the characteristics of this evil angelic spirit. Their eyes is now dark. So when she when they see this Michael uh, standing in the in the way, telling a man to you see leave or he drove out of the garden. Why? Because he wanted to stay. So then you have the woman following the man, see, sticking with the man. So now that they're, that's what they're looking at is a vision. So here Yahweh's coming unto the man. He gives him a vision of the flood. You see, he gives him divine specifications on how to build this ark, which is a threefold structure. It's a most a upper deck, a middle deck, and a lower deck. And it was for the saving of his family. Now, this required trust. Or love, you see what I'm saying? Because Yahweh showed Noah before he ever had children. You see what I'm saying? And or a wife, uh, um, wife and children. So he had to have faith and trust, even in that. Let alone building this ark. And Yahweh gave him 120 years grace period down here of the building of this ark and warning the wicked that it was going to flood. There was a mist that came from the ground. You see. No rain never came from the sky. So to them at that time, it never existed. You see what I'm saying? It was something unheard of. So now here's Yah, here's um, uh, um, Adam. I'm sorry. Here's Noah warning the wicked for 120 years, just like we come down here at the end of this probationary period, preaching for what? 120 minutes, warning what? That there's going to be a flood, a flood of what? The wrath of Yahweh or a fire that's going to consume this earth plane. And our only hope of glory is what? Yahshua the Messiah or the true ark of safety. Now this side, now this ark had one door, one window. You see where that went, door is at? On the side. Where did the woman come out? On the side. Where was the lamb pierced? On the side. Where did the creation come out? Through the side. So it's showing the love. Yahweh is making a way. This is only one way, one path, one truth, one life. You see what I'm saying? So now here he makes a way. Uh, um, Noah and his family into the ark. You see what I'm saying? And they, they're in there for seven days. And then we'll go ahead and pick that up. Uh, you want um, the seventh chapter? Um, Genesis? And, yeah, go ahead when they enter this ark. That was just that part. Into the ark, and then Yahweh shut the door. See what I'm saying? All right, this is um, like he closed up the he closed up the side. You see, he opened it and then he closed it up. Yahweh opened that door, he shut it. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Uh, this is Genesis 7 and 7. Okay, and Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wives with them into the ark. Because of the waters of the flood, jump down to 11. Um, no, I'll jump down to 10. Okay. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. 
In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day, all the fountains of the great deep broken were broken up. Seven days, right? That's perfection. Eight souls have gone, gone into the ark. What is Yahshua doing right now through the trials and tribulations that we're going through? He's perfecting the sons. Now, this principle of eight is free from Yahshua showed me. Now, eight souls were saved back here, right? And then it says, um, many, are, many are called, few are chosen, right? And how Yahweh is only saving a remnant. He's gleaning the field. Well, look here. You're in the sixth dispensation, all right? Now, we're about to go over into the seventh dispensation, the fifth age. Now, we say that we're waiting for the last soul to enter into the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, we know that there were, back in Revelation, there were 24 elders gathered around the throne. You see what I'm saying? And coming back into the, uh, the beginning or the creative age, you had that fall of, of Satan uh, and his hosts. You see what I'm saying? One third of innumerable was cast out. You see? And then what is Yahweh doing? I think that's in 1 Corinthians where it says, gathering all those in heaven and all those on, on earth. You see, you had two thirds that kept their first estate. You have one third that he's saving down here on this earth uh, um, unto himself. And then the rest of the two thirds is being cast with Satan and the angels in the lake of fire. Well, do you know that one third of 24 is eight? We're down here, folks, waiting for the completion of his body so that we all, as Doc said, going over together. So that, just like there was a, a manifestation of eight down here, well, that completion of that body, we're waiting for that last soul or that eight, you see what I'm saying, so that we can move on over until so you see the new heaven and the new earth state, or like unto that spiritual Canaan's land, Jerusalem above, you see, just like that ark, move them over from one age into the next. In Yahshua, the Messiah, he's moving us from one age into the next. This is all done by love. You see what I'm saying? Yahweh saw fit. He saw grace in our eyesight. You see that we might be saved through him. Yahweh's manifesting love. You see the wicked died in the flood. That ark was, uh, um, that water was uh, uh, buried the whole earth. You see, but that ark, what? It was, on, it was moving on top, just like in the days of creation, that spirit moving across the face of the waters, you see, representing Yahshua the Messiah. So they resurrected, you see, they rolled the blood back, and then Yahweh delivered them. That mount, uh, that ark rested on Mount Ararat, you see, and then that land was dry. And then showing that new heaven on that new earth state, Yahweh putting his bow in the cloud, you see, it's a certain the covenant that he wants to destroy the uh, uh, world. Now look. These are many witnesses, many principles that it's just line upon line, precept upon precept, the great cloud of witnesses. You see, whenever you get down and out, look back at the witnesses, not just within the scriptures, but within your own self. You see, we have to have an experience of Yahweh's love towards us. Now, look. When he manifested in his physical body, and I'm jumping ahead. Yahweh said with the sinners, he said with the whoremongers, you see what I'm saying? He said with the people that were disgraced, the people that had infirmity, the people that were uh, uh, sickness, he said with them, he loved, he healed the sick, he healed the blind. Whereas the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't have the love in them. He said, I know you, but you have not the love of what? Elohim in you. Why? Because they, look, look he was, <laughs> there was none righteous, no, not a one. Adam was it, Noah was it, Abraham was it, Moses was it, the high priest back here was it, you see what I'm saying? The only one that was righteous was Yahshua the Messiah. Now, his spirit was moving in and out of folks, you see, uh, the different pat patriarchs and prophets. But now, through his death, burial, and resurrection, out of the Holy Spirit, once you are sealed, once you receive from your seal, Ain't no, oh, I messed up now. Okay, I gotta leave you. No, it's not that. Yahweh said that, no, I will be with you up. Always, even unto the end of the age. When he he was obedient unto death, he, when you read in the textbook about the heart, and it talks about when the person uh, gives a diagram on the heart and how 
when people, you know, abuse the body or they eat a lot and they gain weight and there's more fat or pressure added onto the bones, you see it gets more heavy. Do you know what happens with that heart? That heart has to enlarge, to take on the burden, you see what I'm saying, of the body, to pump the blood, to circulate. So the more that they afflicted him, the more that they hated him, the more he loved them. He died on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see what I'm saying? Yes, That's love. Where somebody mm -hmm. don't, we, oh man, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want the love of Yahshua on the side. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All praise, honor, and glory goes unto him. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Amir Coleman, for a beautiful testimony. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker for this e evening session will be Dr. Shakuya Mo. Um, I'm indeed happy and, uh, you know, to just to give a testimony of the things that y'all have shown me what to be in this great gospel and in this class. And um, to always to be able, um, as one of the brethren always say, to come back one more time uh, to see what Yahweh is going to share uh, unto me and my soul. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you know, looking forward to our event. Uh, it's a lot of hard work to put these events on. I'm not going to lie about that. A lot of meetings and, you know, I'm not one for all the the meetings and stuff, but I understand um, is Yahweh see fit, then I'm fine with that. I mean, it's, it's, his, it's his purpose, it's his plan. And as long as he allows us to come and partake and to glean something for our souls to learn while we're yet in this flesh, then I'm very happy about that, you know, no matter what the logistics may be. But I'm always happy just to give a testimony. And I tend to um, internalize uh, a lot of things and uh, the gospel itself because um, I'm a person that likes to look at my own tent and I'm always looking within to see what is it that I need to do to please my Heavenly Father and to come into a divine uh, revelation that he's going to give me in my soul so that I may please him. That's constantly always one of my things, you know, not looking without, but looking within my conduct and behavior about that yeah, I should have did this or Yahweh, did I do that? You know, just constantly rechecking within my tent. So um, the, I do want to say this, the last time that I was called up, I had made a mistake, and I do want to correct that because I know that we have a lot of people that's watching, and I don't know who could have been watching, but when you get on the floor, it is an awesome job to stand up before just even to give a testimony of Joshua Messiah. You don't want to say the wrong things or to give somebody an illusion that you believe something when you don't. And what I did, I 
disappointed I, when I was able to look back on class, I was making a reference and I said the name Dr. Henry C. Kelly, but I pointed to Yahweh Elohim. And that is a mistake. <laughs> I do not believe that, you know, um, our brother, Dr. Henry C. Kelly, that was given this great divine vision and revelation is Yahweh Elohim. I do believe that he definitely had the spirit of Yahweh Elohim in him. Just as we do, we have the opportunity to have the gift of the Holy Spirit also. He was given a job to do it. He did it very well. And he's finished the work that he had to do. And Yahweh called him home. But we're still here in the flesh, some of us. And our job is an awesome job and task that is set before us. And that is to still keep this thing straight like the founder had it, the vision and revelation that he had, to keep it straight and to continue to preach this gospel like the last speaker said, in sincerity and truth, and not to preach it for any type of material gain. And if you do that, then that's that's between you and Yahweh. I have nothing to say about that. Again, like I said, I'm worried about my own soul and consolation before Yahweh Elohim. I stand before him daily. I'm conscious of his presence and I ask him for that daily. And I'm also conscious of my own conduct and how I have to behave as he wants me to behave in presenting this gospel to the world. And um, like that, the last speaker left out was very beautiful. I enjoyed it. I thank Yahweh for speaking through him. And what we had, the scripture lesson was on love. That's a mighty big topic because Yahshua the Messiah talked about love uh, when he was on the earth plane. And then when he was in a quickening spirit, see, um, he also had told us then in uh, Matthew the 20, 24, uh, 20, 27, 51, but you don't have to get that. But love is a big it's, it's a big deal, you know. You cannot hate your brother and, and say you love Yahweh. He, he definitely talks about that. That's in the law, okay? Go to the law. If you don't believe it, it's in the law. You cannot, um, he gives He gives a, a, a lot of things that he says in that law about how to treat your brother, see? And you cannot uh, treat them with gal, disrespect, talk. He's, he, he, look, just... You know, go back into the law. He would tell you those things. And it's a way that you, if you love Yahweh, like he said, if you love Yahweh Elohim, whom you have not seen, some people have seen him, see, but, you, but who you have not seen in this pure spirit state, see, then how can you see that you see your brother in every day and you don't love him? They're, they're, and see, I was listening to the sound crowd. Uh, I listened to that every day, actually. And um, Dr. Kelly, you know, made a reference, but it's in the scriptures. And uh, matter of fact, let's get that. Um, he talks about leaving your gift at the altar. I think it's Matthew, could be the seventh chapter. Uh, but he talks about that uh, when you finna bring your gift to the altar. Now, what that, what he's talking about then, I had a whole other different thing I want to talk about, but you know, you have a look. Other vessels have said it on the floor. I wouldn't go go that way, but yeah, I'm like he, he takes you the way he wants you to go, and that's how we want to do. We want to be pleasing to him. Yeah. Now, this tabernacle pattern. See, this tabernacle pattern. I go through the pattern because the last speaker wanted to go through. He didn't get a chance to. Now, this pattern that was given out here in Mount Sinai. See, it was given to Moses. See, and he talked about Moses, the twelfth chapter of Exodus. There, see how. When the children of Israel, see, and he talks about that love, calling his one son up out of Egypt. That is truly the love of Yahweh. To take a people, a no people, and form himself a people. See, and they were up here in the land of Canaan. You know, Abraham got Isaac. Isaac got Jacob. Jacob is the one that begat the 12 sons who become the 12 tribes of Israel. Because of a, a now he called Abraham out of the Earl of Chaldees away from his family. See, he was taken away from his family, his mother and fa father. See, he took him away. And that's called a separation. And Yahweh would do that sometimes. He would separate you because he needs to show you and you need to get closer to him 
and show you things that he, he wants you to learn. And Abraham, see, that out here, there was a, he caused a famine in the land, see, to bring these people, 70 souls down here in Egypt. Joseph was a forerunner because Joseph, see, his brethren again up here, see, they were jealous of the gift that Joseph had, which was interpret, to, to interpret dreams. But truly, Yahweh Elohim is the one that interpreted dreams, and Joseph said that. Well, they get down here in Egypt. Joseph was already down here. See, he was uh, the second man to Pharaoh, see. And he, Yahweh had prepared his people somewhere that they would stay once they got down here into Egypt, see. And at a point in time, they began to multiply. That's the 12th chapter of Exodus. You don't have to get it. But at, at, a, at, a, at a period in time, it was, a, it was a pharaoh that knew not Joseph, see? And they began to be evilly entreated, see? So much so that they cried out to Yahweh Elohim. And Yahweh having a purpose, a pattern, and a plan that they were ignorant of at that time, it had not been revealed. This pattern had not been revealed yet. They didn't understand that they was operating by this tabernacle pattern that Yahweh Elohim instructed Moses to build. They cried out, and we just went through a lecture. You make him play a couple of sound. You make him play a couple of, uh, go back on Zoom and listen to that lecture about Yahweh Elohim hears our cry. See, beautiful lecture. He, they down here, they cried out with the mighty cry. But Yahweh heard that he purposed it. See, but they was ignorant of the fact that he did it. And they cried out with a mighty cry. So Yahweh Elohim, see, at the appointed time when it was time for their deliverance, see, they, they, he had the Egyptians to turn up the heat on them. Just like we're down here in this present kingdom age, which is the fourth age in a series of seven, and we ended the sixth dispensation. And guess what? The heat is turned up on us too. And we crying out too. Because it is wicked down here. It is wicked. Mm -hmm. And to the core, I mean, every facet of this earth plane is, you can't name me one thing that's not wicked that the Satan don't have his hands in. And if you've come to that understanding, then blessed are you. Because you know that you don't want to be down here. Right. You, know, you ain't just wallowing around down here. You, you just wallowing. No. If you're a true son or daughter, the Holy Spirit, you got a load being down here, see? And you're trying to get your soul right before it was within the eyes of Yahweh Elohim, see? That's what you want. And you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's love. So when these people were down here and they cried out, Yahweh heard their cry. He, but he's going by pattern now. He's going by purpose now. Just like he, like the last speaker told you about the purpose with the um, and then he uh, being up there in the garden time, according, well, according to most vision, 40 days, and they had to come up out of there. See, the, he had already purposed how they would come out of there, why they would come out of there. He already, and he already had set up back here in pure spirit a savior or a redeemer. He's the, he's the one that's going to deliver them as he delivered this body of people meaning his one son about of Egypt. Well, yeah, he did. Well, he called Moses please out here because there was, there was death, there was resurrection, like the last people were saying, you know, and that's the pattern that we'll get into it for a minute to show you how this, the pattern works in every facet of life, and it definitely in the human body, blood, water, and spirit abides therein. Well, he gets down here, see, he comes out here to the wilderness of Sinai, the third chapter of Exodus, Yahweh Elohim introduces himself to Moses. See, Moses was saved from a death decree himself, you know, and he's and there he he was, he comes out here, uh, uh you know, out here as, as Yahweh Elohim had 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 foretold already uh, had, had already made the way he's coming out here because he's fleeing a death decree that's on his head by killing an Egyptian. See, that was smiting his brother. And he buries him in the sand. That's death burial. He resurrects on out of there. See, now he comes out here because he got to be on time. Now, that was something else that used to be talked about in another class that I was in, that I had the opportunity to hear our founder talk about that. How that, you know, Yahweh Elohim purpose every facet of your life. 
you got to be somewhere at a certain time to do his will. And you want to be there because he's moving you to do that. Well, he moved Moses. Moses come out here. He was a herder of sheep. There he is at the burning bush. Bush is burning, but not consumed. Now he's being introduced to Yahweh Elohim. He's also being commissioned to go back down there in the land of Egypt. But now he has a mighty name, the name of Yahweh Elohim. He's the first prophet, see, that knows the name of Yahweh. The last we could talk about the prophets of no the Noah, you know, Abraham, no, here's Noah, you got Adam, Noah, now Kazadik, you know, all of these, they didn't know the name of Yahweh Elohim. Moses is the first one that he revealed his name to. He they knew him, you know, there, there's a uh, Obadiah, Isaiah. You know, they knew him by El Shaddai. See, the El Shaddai meaning Almighty Provider, and he's still the Almighty Provider. We don't have nothing unless Yahweh have opened the door and given it to us. See, we don't have anything unless he has ordained it and gave it to us. See, whether we conscious of it or not, he still provides. So now he comes back down here, and he comes down here with sides now, see, against Pharaoh, because Yahweh said that he's going to devastate Egypt which was a world dynasty, see? And he did do just that. And now the children of Israel, the 12th chapter, it, well, let's get that. Since I'm a, the 12th chapter of, of, of Exodus, where he tells them to take out a land, because you can't come out any old kind of way. Now that the Messiah has gone through a death, first we could talk about it, burial, resurrection, and ascension, now that he's done, now he's poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. We already talked about we're in his fourth present kingdom. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on Jew and Gentile. So now it's a spiritual age. It's no more you can worship him about under the law that was given to Jews and Jews only. This is a spiritual age now. Now the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out. The promise has been fulfilled. He's fulfilled it like he said he was going to do. So he did that. So now this age is spiritual. So now the crying out here, the cries of the children of Israel, he heard our cry. Well, we're crying out today. He hears our cry. He delivers us from whatever it is that we are crying to him about. You've been heaped up because the look, the heat has been turned up. It's not gonna, it's not gonna get any, any, any uh any better down here. They just sent something out on PBS. I think people need to take a look at it, talking about easy money. But well, they ain't talking about easy money like you think of. They're talking about the federal government. Uh, you, this is the United States we're talking about. And they're going to cause a reset. Well, who is this? The, ain't the government on his shoulders? Okay. <laughs> Yow, the government is going to yell at other shoulders. Joshua the Messiah. He's controlling this. He's forcing them. Into a recession. But what does that mean? Not only just for the United States, you're talking about all the rest of the countries now. You're talking about Britain, you're talking about the whole shebang now. You're talking about uh, the Messiah, that there should be wars and rumors of war. And if you talk about the Russia now, the United States, they have a lot to save themselves against the United States. Now you said the wars and rumors of war is ready to get those folks in the United States. Now what you going to do? You're going to believe Yahshua the Messiah, who's now a quickening spirit. See that you have the first to tell you how that this New Testament is written in your heart and in your mind, and these clouds that set up is not for help the skeleton. Now we ain't got no whole bunch of folks down here like the mega churches. We don't need to because Yahweh have only dealt with a few people. He's never dealt with the masses of people. He can, but he just don't do it that way. It's always a few number of people to hear. See. Now he now I, I, you know now these things talking about that PBS special maybe you need to look that up but it's talking about he's forcing a recession down here and when you talk about a recession you're talking about when the federal government forces that hand they're talking about loss of jobs okay your job may be affected they're already in the zone all of the major companies around. And the banking industry, they have gotten together and they have they have told these people, you gotta let these folks home. Now, what you gonna do? Now, a lot of these people have no hope down here. They don't know who to cry out to, but we do. Think about it, and neither should you, because Yahweh have always 
took care of his own. You can be working with a mass with, with two or three people on your job to be fired, but you can be working because mm -hmm. Yahweh did that. He had the children mm -hmm. of Israel was in the land of Goshen. See, that was in the land of Goshen. When the when, look, when the half angel went through there, after they had the blood of the lamb, see, after Yahweh had Elohim had told them specifically what to do. Now you can read that. I have you to read that in the scriptures about them taking out that lamb and what they had to do. They were spared, but the Egyptians were never told. Now that's the state of the world. That's Mystery Babylon. And I'm not saying Yahweh will have mercy on whom he will. That's not my call. If he got mercy on, on somebody that don't know nothing about the truth. That's his call to do that. I don't know they heart and mind like he does. See, yeah. Read that, please. Exodus 12 and uh, just get to the meal part where he said that about that lamb. This is uh, to the meal. Mm -hmm. This is Exodus 12 and one, 12 and three, speak ye all to the congregation of Israel in the tenth in the tenth day of the month, mm -hmm. and they shall take to them to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. A lamb for a house. They had to take a lamb. Now, this is the meal. This is in preparedness to leave Egypt. See, they had to take a lamb. And there are they that testify to Yahshua Messiah. Now, now, now not this. Now, Yahshua Messiah have not been born yet. He said he came in to fulfill the thing. He's instituting it back here under the leadership of Joshua, or more correctly, Joshua, the son of Nun. See, he's instituting that. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next next unto him, his house take it according to the number of souls. Right. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Now, every man, woman, and child had to make their count for the lamb. See, that's for the body of those who live of Yahshua Messiah. He's telling you, you got to make your account for the lamb. He's still born the horn, folks. Make your account for the lamb. You down here at the fourth age and the sixth and seventh. Make your account for the lamb. Make sure you understand this gospel. Lord, want to spend 40. Make sure you understand it and make sure that you have Yahshua in your tent. See, because stuff is getting rocky out here. See, and when the chaos come down, and we have one brother that said, God, I don't want to hit the bed. That stuff hit the bed. Is Yahweh with it? Hey, no, no, wait a minute. Don't, don't go there. You know, don't say if he's with you. You should already know. And how are you going to know? By coming down here to these classes, see, with a humble heart before Yahweh Elohim and asking him to reveal himself, to give you and to your soul, to make sure that your election is sure. That's what you that's what the whole thing is about. To make sure your election is sure. Nobody else, because you, you are back here. This is our school master. Every man had to make their account for the lamb. He wasn't, he wasn't just saying that stuff. Y'all would just don't be talking like we do. He mean what he's saying, say what he means. Read on. The verse Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. That's y'all. Read on. Ye shall take it out. From the sheep or from the goats, mm -hmm. and ye shall kill it, up, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day mm -hmm. of the same month. Mm -hmm. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, mm -hmm. and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts, on the two side posts, and on the upper door posts, the door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, mm -hmm. roasted with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Mm -hmm. Eat not of it raw right. nor sodden mm -hmm. at all with water, but roast with fire. Roast with fire. His head with his leg mm -hmm. and with the pertinence thereof, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Right. And that which remain remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Right. And thus shall ye eat it 
with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, mm -hmm. and your staff in your, in your hand. hand. Right. And you shall eat it in haste. Mm -hmm. It is Yahweh's Passover. It is Yahweh's Passover. Now he now he told you the nature of how they did that. Don't you know and realize that yeah, we know that we're in the Gregorian month. See, I understand that. But don't you know that this event is coming up on the Passover? And I'm here to tell you, boldly to your face, there will be a reflection. There will be a reflection after that event on a Passover. Yeah, I said it. And because Dr. said it's always a reflection. Your reflections make up the history of the world. That's what he said. So I'm looking at a reflection. Y'all, we're going to make a reflection. How are you going to do it? I don't, I don't know that. But I know that I'm looking for a reflection of a Passover. And you better look for one in your life and something to get a pass over of some type of principle that he's going to manifest. That's why it's so important to be here. And I hope that you are, he allows you to come. See, nevertheless, see, they, these people, they went through that, Yahweh went through that, that they, he brought out 10 devastating plagues. The last plague was, the ninth plague was Stygian Black Diamond, the death, the death, see, of the firstborn man and beast. They did not have that blood on the inside of their house. See, that's like today. The Holy Spirit has been poured out, see, on Jew and Gentile. And the plagues in the land is coming. Matter of fact, they're already here. You, you just heard me talk about the recession that's going to happen. And your judgment may be affected. See, now you now I'm just telling you, you don't want that when these plagues are happening on Mystery Babylon, see. Now I understand, yeah, I know that seven uh look, look, the first three was on the was on both from the children of Israel and it was on the uh, the Egyptians. Yeah, I know that. See, but the last seven who made a severance was only on the Egyptians only. He's gonna make a severance because mm -hmm. he's gonna keep his sons working or doing whatever they have to do to survive down here. He's gonna make a way. I just told you he's he's the almighty provider. He's gonna provide. So don't, don't get shaken in your boots about what's happening to the world. Just make sure that your election is sure in Yahshua the Messiah. The first speaker told you about the trusting in him, the listening to him, being conscious of his ever presence in you. He labored with you on that thing. See, we have to know, just like these people back here, they all had the lamb. Wasn't nobody there in, the, in the assembly time. I'm like, I, ain't gonna, I don't think I'm going to eat that. I'm gonna, they didn't do that. Look, that whole assembly had that lamb in them like Yahweh said. And they had the, and they ate and roasted in the night because they know that they was going to be getting ready on the move. Now, the cloud, they was following that cloud that went through the battle waters of the Red Sea. Yahweh made a way out of no way. Come into the wilderness of Sinai. See, here, as I was talking about that tabernacle, when Moses makes his three trips up there, see, he sees the days of creation down. He sees the inner workings. He spent 40 days, 40 nights up here. Well, he was well, the, he, the days of creation, seven days. You see, Elohim rested. And, and that's that day was the Sabbath day. He rests on the Sabbath day from his labor, from his work. Now, the rest of the 33 days, he sees the inner workings of this tabernacle pattern. That was mightily important, see. Uh, he, now, here's what's pattern right here that you can see wonderfully. See, a man is made by this tabernacle pattern. See. This tabernacle pad has seven steps therein. I'll go through it briefly. One being the gate, two being the brazen altar, send sacrifice. See, put the sacrifice on him. You had four, uh, they placed that blood on the four horns there. Three was this brazen labor that was a twofold function. It was a burial, and also he let out that water it was a type of a regeneration. The high priest was anointed here, so he had to be anointed before he can officiate in this holy place. Four being the door. See, of uh, this see, and Messiah say, I am the door. Matter of fact, all of these vessels in here, that's what he is. See, then you had the fifth step is this holy place. That's the name of the topic that's getting ready to uh we get ready to go in in April. See, what is the holy place? See, but you had the seven branch golden candlestick. Did not they have light out here? See, there was nothing in no darkness. You had a table. Of shoe bread, where there was twelve loaves of unleavened bread, when Yahweh rained down manna, he fed the people after. See, but then you had this altar of incense that had four ingredients by the apothecary, was a sweet-smelling savior to the nostrils of Yahweh. 
Then Moses was a type. I said type of an intercessor. He was not the reality. Testify. He's a type of Yahshua the Messiah being our intercessor. Then on the, the sixth step was this second veil, lavishly embellished with angelic hosts. That's why you got the first creation. You got the angelic creation first. Mirrors the physical creation, see? So now the seventh step is this, this Ark of the Covenant. Yahweh says in Leviticus 16:2, I will dwell between the two reeds of a cherub above the mercy seat. See, this high priest was only allowed to come in there one time a year. That was October 10th. And when he came in there three times, one for his own sin, see. The second was for the, the, the sin of the children of Israel, see. And then he had to come in there with, uh, with the clean of the sanctuary. A total of 21 times he sprinkled that blood toward that mercy seat. And if he did everything correct, he would see the flash of the Shekinah. He knew then that the children of, the, of Israel's sins had been forgiven that for that one year. And he had bells and pomegranates on the garments there, so they heard him coming out, so they know that was good for that year. This is the pattern. The pattern is the most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. Threefold, but yet what? Yahweh Elohim. He's pure spirit, see, without descriptive shape and form. The set, the first week the children, he moves into a set, shape, and form, incorporeal, Elohim, super incorporeal form, known as Elohim, the arch type or the original pattern of the universe. See, then at the appointed time, he's Yahshua the Messiah in a physical form. He walks around in his own creation, doing what he came in to do a job. He's fulfilling this old covenant or this old law that was given to Jews and Jews only. Means that in the way. He said, Think not that I come to destroy life. He didn't come to destroy life, he was law itself. See, he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it and move it out of the way and usher us into, that's why it says here, nailed to the cross. He said, in, when Yahshua Messiah, John 19 and 30, he said, it is finished. He didn't mean his life was finished. He's a quickening spirit. See, he meant that he had finished the work that the Father gave him to do. That was to do what? To fulfill the law and the prophet. Look, people, there was 613 laws on here. We never, we never would have did it. The first one, look, they broke around this mountain. They dragging their bull eye. Oh, child, I know what he did. You know, and he can barely see an offering. He ain't gonna survive with two turtle bears. Everybody at their chin door looking. I know what he did. They looking. He don't the thing. See, he can have. Now you can't worship him according to no physical acts. That's why when the gospel was preached and they went on a free ecclesiastical peace mission, they told him, they said, look, you know, this law has been fulfilled. Right. That's why they said in the, the royal council of churches, we have been groping in darkness. But yet, look, Yahweh got a purpose and he got a pattern. They had to continue on because that mystery of iniquity, it must Continue on. It's side by side. Yahweh is the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of iniquity. It's a world domination, just like the spirit of righteousness. It must go down side by side. Just like you got in this Bible, you can't understand it. They side by side. See, to the bitter end, see. But nevertheless, you're in a spiritual age. See, you're in this New Testament. It's written in the heart. And in the mind, see, the kingdom of Yahshua, you're in his kingdom, not waiting to be, but you should already be in the kingdom, in your heart and in your mind. You're doing spiritual sacrifices with the fruit of your lips. Look, you can't carry no bullets no more. That won't do. See, you're not, look, they didn't kill too many of them animals anyway. I'm glad Yahweh stopped it. Now, I'm an animal lover. But nevertheless, <laughs> but and then you got the law of the spirit of life. So you'll see the law of the spirit. That's this new covenant where he's writing in your heart and in your mind. That's why he said we don't need no man to teach us. Because the Holy Spirit is teaching us in our heart and in our mind. What did I have hell there? Oh, not that Okay. Did you get the one when he said leave your gift at the altar? Matthew uh, 5. Okay, well, let, let's read that when he talks about that gift. And then I want to get Deuteronomy 6 and 5, because uh, we're talking about love. 
And I wanted to get that about the Ezekiel about that woman when she was polluted in her own blood. And then I want to also get the fulfillment when Yahshua Messiah talks about that in Mark 10, and I have you start at 15. But let's get to one where he talks about that leave your gift to the altar. All right, this is um, Matthew 5, and I'll start at 22. Yeah, give me a train of thought. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. Now, this is Yahshua Messiah talking, and this is under the law. I know exactly where I'm at. He said right here, he's done in his third age with the second age in time at the end of the 4,000 years. He's telling them at this point in time about their brother. Read on. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, mm -hmm. shall be in danger of the council. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and then and there remember that thy brother have ought against thee, leave there thy gift. Now hold it. He said, if you have ought with your brother, if you have a problem, if there's been a falling out, if there's been an argument that has not been settled, don't come running up to the priest <laughs> with your gift. Look. This is what they had to get there. You see this, you see this tabernacle? The tabernacle been set up now. See, they had the tabernacle too, but the Messiah walked on the earth plane too. See, he's saying, I think it was the Herodian temple. And that's when he's talking about destroy this temple 40 and six years that this temple been in the building. But the but he's talking about the temple of his body. See, but nevertheless, here it is right here. You can see it. Now here they were running up in there with their gift. Here's the gift right there. They got brand new bring their little gift up there. He said, the first thing you do is He said, stop right there. Yahweh brought it back to your remembrance. Hold it. Got a problem with somebody. Now read. Tell them what you got to do. Leave thy gift before the altar. Now leave your gift at the altar. And go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. First be reconciled to your brother. And then come offer your gift. So whatever the problem is, if it is bothering your consciousness, see, then Yahweh is telling, Yahshua is telling you, look, that's an inward operation. First, you better have some words with that particular vessel about some things. Let's clear, you know, clear the air, because he said to love one another. You don't want to be walking around with problems, you know, in here, like he don't see because he do see it. So he said, first reconcile, read on. Let me, look, let me say this. I know sometimes it's not an easy thing to do. I understand that. It's sometimes it's, it's a hard thing to say sometimes you're sorry. And I was wrong about things. Dr. Kim talks about that too. See, sometimes that's a hard thing to say that. But it's better to, 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 to clear the air and to be, to be at peace with one another. You don't want no unresidue type of thing. And Dr. Kelly talked about it. He said, look, look. He said, look, I always smooth the stuff over. I'm talking about myself, too. Because sometimes I don't like to come to a confrontation. or not. It don't have to be a confrontation, but like, you like, look, hey, I'm wrong about this thing. I'd rather just say I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings or whatever and mean it. And let's just go. You know what I'm saying? Because he said, I don't want to keep smoothing things over. You just, you just go on, just smooth it over. That's really nothing. Read on. Um, in Matthew 5, uh, agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Now, see, Dr. Kelly's playing that. He has a hidden room in the room with him. See, we don't get a week. Look over here. I ain't got a week. You can't tell my spirit. Satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. In the body of my body. I ain't got to agree with him over here. That's right. You know what I'm saying? All right. Read on. Least at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, mm -hmm. and the judge deliver thee to the officer, mm -hmm. and thou be cast into prison. Now that's what that happened under the law, folks. See, like I said, we ain't got to agree with the adversary over here. Okay, did I have anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me get those scriptures on love. Uh, yes, sir. 
Amir, which one? Oh, let's get the one in, and let's go by the law of the prophet. I want Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Love Yahweh with all your heart and all your mind. He's telling Israel this under the law. See, and also in, in Ezekiel, where he talked about that woman that was polluted in her own blood. And then the fulfillment of Yahshua talking to this guy in Mark 10 and 15. Because you that, that gives you a little train of thought. Because we talked about the love. And the first people went over some of the plates. And this is the true love of Yahshua Messiah. Because it says so in the scriptures in John, for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, he came all the way down from pure to do jobs. You know, he went through, he fulfilled the law and the prophets and nailed it to his cross to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why he talked about another comforter. And John, I will send another comforter to you. See, he had to go. See, he couldn't stay in the flesh. He had to go, you know, so that he can give us. Deep down here at the end of the thing, give us the gift of the Holy Spirit so where he was in heaven, we may be also. In heaven, but we are earth. We're looking around. See, read on. This is Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love. Wait, hold it. Get, you got to uh, read the scripture. Okay. Deuteronomy 6. Mm -hmm. And four, four. Hear, O Israel. Now, now this is Yahweh Elohim speaking. And he's talking to this, this nation of people whom he has formed. And that the first speaker told you this is his bride. This when they were married. They said, all that Yahweh do, we will, say, we, we will do and be obedient, just like you do in a physical marriage. And we have said the same things too. Yahweh, just give me your spirit and anything you tell me, I say, I want to be with you. I want to get, have the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to learn. I will, we, we've been, you know, we said the same thing in our heart and mind too to him. So they were married, see, to Yahweh Elohim. Read on. Hear, O Israel. Yahweh our Elohim is Yahweh unity. Mm -hmm. That's not the one I wanted. It's uh it's, it's is one. It's Deuteronomy and, I five. and thou shalt okay. love Yahweh thy Elohim okay. with all thy heart. Now you to love Yahweh. Now he's telling them you have to love Yahweh Elohim with all your heart and with all thy soul. And with all of your soul. And with all thy might. And with all your might. See. And these words which I command thee this day mm -hmm. shall be in thine heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now that's what he told the children of Israel. And Yahshua Messiah himself would re repeat it. See. He would repeat it in the days of his flesh. When he was still in the flesh. He repeated the great commandment. See. About loving Yahweh Elohim. See. Okay, now did you find that one in Ezekiel about that woman polluted in her own blood? Because we talk about the love of Yahweh Elohim. See how he's loved us. See, he died the death of an outcast soul for our, for our souls to be saved. He's bought our souls back from the devil. See, it, 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 that's why it's so hard for us to see people that don't want to accept Yahweh Elohim. When you begin to preach something and say something about Yahweh, they don't want to accept it. That's hard for us to see that and to hear that. Because we would like all the souls to believe. Yeah, because we know that if you do believe Yahweh Elohim, see, your soul is not laid down, see, or separated from him for all eternity. See, you know, that's a hard thing for us. Our loved ones, our kids, whatever the, the thing may be. Yeah. See. That's a hard pill to swallow. You know, as long as they're in the flesh, we won't keep on preaching. If he allow us to say something to him, we won't keep on saying. See, we know. This is Ezekiel 16 and 4. Okay, thank you. you know, yeah, Dr. Up. Jackson. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, mm -hmm. thy navel was not cut. Mm -hmm. Neither was thou washed in water mm -hmm. to supply thee. Mm -hmm. Thou was not salted at all, no saddled, 
at all. None I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, mm -hmm. to have compassion upon thee, mm -hmm. but thou was cast out in the open field. Now that, that was us, cast out in the open field. See, nobody didn't pity our souls. They didn't care. See, we had to understand that Yahweh or not. He had to get us where we were and call us out of darkness and mystery Babylon. We know. Uh, to the loathing of thy person mm -hmm. in the day that thou was born. Mm -hmm. And when I passed by thee, when Yahweh passed by us, read on, on, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, mm -hmm. live ye, I said unto thee, mm -hmm. when thou was in thy blood, live. Live, see. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, mm -hmm. and thou hast increased and waxed great, mm -hmm. and thou art come to excellence ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, mm -hmm. and thine hair is grown, mm -hmm. whereas thou was naked and bare. And that you thought the Israel under the law, but that's still true for us down here now. Those that do not have the gift of the Holy Spirit, before we knew anything, before we knew anything about this great gospel, we was yet in our own blood, see. And he said, live, and called us out of darkness. We are eight verse. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. Love is the time of love, see. I told you he loved us. See, he talked about Israel, but that's the same thing. See, it's the time of the world. See, and I spread my skirt over. He spread his skirt, the Lord and the prophet. See, the two witnesses that see all the stars. See, you know, and covered thy nakedness. Yeah, he was naked because the children, the women, these two, when they come out the garden, they tried to come up with some dog on leaves. And I'm like, that going to do? I mean, I mean, I'm talking about like, Yahweh gave him a coat of skin. You know why he did that? The match they call on mine. Flesh for flesh. We do mm -hmm. Okay. Yea, mm -hmm. I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. Yes, said Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. and thou became mine. Thou became mine. Listen to our words now. Yeah. Thou became mine. So you are his. Mm -hmm. That's why in the first thing you are not your own because you've been born with a purpose. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We know. Then washed I thee with water. Mm -hmm. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood that's from right. thee and anointed thee with oil. With, the, with oil. Now, that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hold mm -hmm. that. I got a few minutes. Let's get the one with God from the side. When he's talking about it, you may have to cut that up, but he's talking about that guy. Um, that's, in, that's in Mark 10 and uh, yeah, you just started 15. But, but I wanted the part when Yahshua told him he said, well, all these things I have done for my youth up. He knew the law. But Yahweh said, I, it's one thing that you don't have. You know, I read that right That We'll start at 10, Mark 10. You can start at maybe 17. The 21. So. This is Mark 10 and 17. Mm -hmm. And when he was gone forth, into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him mm -hmm. and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, this is us too. What may we do that we might inherit eternal life? See, we know. And Yahshua said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Don't call me good. There's none good but Yahweh Elohim. We know. There is none good but one, mm -hmm. and that is Elohim. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, mm -hmm. do not kill, right. do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy mother and father. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. He said, I have done these things from my youth. He looked at Yahshua, Yahshua, I did these things. Then Yahshua beheld in him, loved him. He beheld him, 
And he loved it. See, right at that point, read on. And said unto him, mm -hmm. one thing thou lackest. Now, one thing you lack. And see, hopefully there's none of us, but if it is, that's okay. Because when you're talking to the master and you lack something, he's the very one that can tell you what it is. And as he told me, he cleaned up and all over, he can clean it up. See, read on. Go thy way, mm -hmm. sell whatsoever thou hast, mm -hmm. and give to the poor, uh -huh. and thou shalt have treasure in, in heaven. In heaven. And come take up the cross and follow me. Right. Follow me like the first speaker told you. Follow God. Well, read on. And he said at that thing and went away grieved, mm -hmm. for he had great possessions. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh looked around about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall, thy, shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of Yahweh? Okay, thank you, Dr. Jackson. I heard the bell. The reality of it, I had that read because if we lack anything, we're supposed to, Jerry talk about that, if you lack wisdom, if you lack knowledge, we talked about that. You're supposed to go and ask Yahweh who give it liberally to every man. Right. So in this age, under this fourth and last kingdom, this present kingdom age, this third age in time, we don't want to say to the great master, yeah, we want to tell him, well, what, what, what do I lack? Well, I mean, what is, what's, what's, what am I missing? In our heart and mind. And when he tells you, don't be like, oh, no, that ain't, that ain't happening to me. That's not to Don't do that. Because he knows what's in that heart map. You want to not go away sorrowful and grievous, but you want to say to Joshua, Joshua, whatever it is, I know you know, just clean me up and see, let me see fit that I want to please you. It ain't nobody else that you got. We're not trying to please the folks down here, the flesh down here, folks. We're trying to please Yahweh Elohim. As he had the first speaker painstakingly told you, trusting in Yahshua, see, in every facet of our lives, see, and not be shaken by things that's happening down here now. That is the reality. It's the trust in him and depend on him. And whatever we lack, it don't make no difference what it is, but just, just to go to Yahshua and he will give to us liberty. Right. And with all that, I'd like to say hallelujah to the great Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mays, for a beautiful testimony. Praise Joshua. The whole class is beautiful. Um, I just have a few announcements. Uh, we meet publicly at the Best Western Coast Hotel, 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois, on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. And on Monday nights, we are on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30. We meet twice a month on Thursdays, which will be announced on a month-to-month -month basis, which is last Thursday of the month. And um, I'll say the rest of the announcements and classes over. Will we please stand for doxology, which is taken out of the last two verses of the book of Jude? Let us bow our hearts in it. Now unto him, who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, the Yahshua Messiah, our sovereign. We want glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times now and ever. Let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.